Welcome to Open Heavens Devotional Commentary, a guide to a close fellowship with God with Salami Energy Harina, your host. We are glad to have you today. Hello, good day, and thank you for joining us today again. Open Heavens is written by our Father and the Lord, Pastor E.A. Adebue, the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God. This commentary intends to bring insights to God's Word by the help of the Holy Spirit. Today's date is Saturday, the 24th day of February 2024, and our topic for today is A Call to Tenacity. Let us pray. Father, we give you thanks, we worship your name, we are grateful for the privilege of life. Thank you for how you kept us from the beginning of the week to this very moment. Thank you for your faithfulness that we enjoy each day. Thank you for divine provisions. Thank you because in our lives, you have fulfilled your word which says that when there's a casting down, we will have a lifting up. We are grateful. Today we come before you again to receive of your word. We ask that you would speak to us. Cause the ears of our hearts to be inclined to your word today. Help us also to be obedient and to receive encouragement for every troubled heart as your word comes. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Our memory verse for today is from the book of Romans chapter 4 verse 20. Romans 4 verse 20 reads, He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Romans chapter 4 verse 20. Our text for today is in two parts. We'll be reading first from Genesis chapter 37 from verse 6 to 28, then we'll read from chapter 41 from verse 39 to 44. Genesis chapter 37 from verse 6 to verse 28 reads, And he said unto them, Here I pray you this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheaf arose, and also stood upright. And behold, your sheaves stood round about, and made obeisance to my sheaf. And his brethren said to him, Shall thou indeed reign over us, or shall thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. And he dreamed yet another dream, and told it his brethren, and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more, and, behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to me. And he told it to his father and to his brethren. And his father rebuked him, and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee to the earth? And his brethren envied him, but his father observed the saying. And his brethren went to feed their father's flock in Shechem. And Israel said unto Joseph, Do not thy brethren feed the flock in Shechem? Come and I will send thee unto them. And he said to him, Here am I. And he said to him, Go, I pray thee, see whether it be well with thy brethren, and well with the flocks, and bring me word again. So he sent him out of the vale of Hebron, and he came to Shechem. And a certain man found him, and, behold, he was wandering in the field. And the man asked him, saying, What seekest thou? And he said, I seek my brethren, tell me, I pray thee, where they feed their flocks. And the man said, They are departed hence, for I heard them say, Let us go to Dotan. And Joseph went after his brethren, and found them in Dotan. And when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. And they said one to another, Behold, this dreamer cometh. Come now therefore, and let us slay him, and cast him into some pit, and we will say, Some evil beast hath devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. And Reuben heard it, and he delivered him out of their hands, and said, Let us not kill him. And Reuben said unto them, Shed no blood, but cast him into this pit that is in the wilderness, and lay no hand upon him that he might read him out of their hands to deliver him to his father again. And it came to pass when Joseph was come unto his brethren, 
that they stripped Joseph out of his coat, his coat of many colors that was on him, and they took him and cast him into a pit, and the pit was empty, there was no water in it. And they sat down to eat bread, and they lifted up their eyes and looked, and behold, a company of Ishmaelites came from Gilead with their camels, bearing spicery and balm and mire, going to carry it down to Egypt. And Judah said unto his brethren, What profit is it if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? Come and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh. And his brethren were content. Then there passed by Midianite merchantmen, and they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit, and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for twenty pieces of silver, and they brought Joseph into Egypt. Genesis chapter 37, from verse 6 to verse 28. We would be reading the second part of our text now, which is still from Genesis. We would be reading chapter 41 from verse 39 to verse 44. Genesis chapter 41, verse 39 to 44 reads, And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God hath shewed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Thou shalt be over my house, and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand, and put it upon Joseph's hand, and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen, and put a gold chain about his neck. And he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had. And they cried before him, Bow the knee. And he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. Genesis chapter 41 from verse 39 to 44. God bless the reading of his word to us today in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Our topic for today once more is a call to tenacity. And in the body of today's devotional, our Father and the Lord says to us that when I studied those who had gone ahead of me in ministry, I discovered that many of them got promises from God concerning the assignment he called them to do. For a long time, however, their situation did not look like the promises they received, yet they kept doing the work, and after some time, saw God fulfill his promise. When God calls you for an assignment, he will show you the exciting end results. However, when you begin to walk in that calling, you will start to see tough situations that you must go through to get the results he promised. Joseph had dreams about his brothers and parents bowing to him. That was exciting, but for those dreams to come to pass, he had to be sold into slavery, be lied against, and be thrown in prison. Nonetheless, he remained steadfast believing that one day what God showed him will come to pass, and it did come to pass. Beloved, if God has called you to an assignment and has made some promises to you, and yet things are not looking like what he has said, you are in good company. Everyone who ever received a call from God also went through this, but only those who were tenacious enough to stay the course succeeded. When God called me to full-time ministry, one of the promises he made to me was that I will lead a mighty end-time army for him. At that time, the church was very small. I thought he would grow the church quickly to build that army, but we would increase by two members in one week and reduce by four the next week. I held seminars, fasted, prayed, and did everything I knew to do but the church did not grow. I had left my well-paying job to answer God's call, so I became a laughing stock to my friends at the university because they thought I was crazy to have made that decision. 
Nothing seemed to be working, but I kept at it. I did not compromise on my faith and I did not stop trusting God. Today, the redeemed Christian Church of God is in over 190 nations of the world and we can indeed say that it is a mighty end-time army. Like Joseph, don't compromise in times of trials. Keep pressing on and you will see God's promises come to pass. God bless his word to us today in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Our topic for today once more is a call to tenacity. Yesterday we saw a similar topic which was a call to diligence. And from that study we learned that to reach the top, we will need to study those who have excelled in our fields of interest. We learned that God wants us to be involved in kingdom service. We were told that the hand that cannot do manual labor for the kingdom cannot heal the sick. We were also told that we need more than our calling to be able to succeed in divine assignment, as only those who are diligent can make full proof of their calling. Hallelujah! Today we have before us the topic a call to tenacity. And from today's study, our Father and the Lord makes us understand that God's promises to us never fail. Scripture tells us in Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 3, For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, it says, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Today's word is to that person who may be getting tired already. Yes, it is true that God has promised you, but you have waited and you feel like you are waiting for too long. You may be asking, Lord, when will the fulfillment of these promises be? Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 3 where we just read tells us, Do it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. We are told in today's study that when God calls you for an assignment, He will show you the exciting end results. However, when you begin to walk in that calling, you will start to see tough situations that you must go through to get the results He promised. If God had shown you before time all that you may have to pass through to get to the things He has promised you, you may just get too discouraged to even start the journey. But He remains faithful to His word. Scripture tells us in Numbers chapter 23 verse 19 that God is not a man that He should lie, neither the Son of Man that he should repent. It says, Had he said, and shall he not do it? Or had he spoken, and shall he not make it good? When God calls you, and then you face turbulence on the path of that journey, remember he who has called you and his faithfulness to bring in his word to pass in your life. Joseph, whom we read about today, despite being ill-treated by his own brothers, he was put in a pit, sold into slavery, he was lied against and was put in prison too. And even in the prison, he was forgotten by those he expected to remember him when they were out. Yet in all and through all that happened, God brought his promise to pass concerning Joseph. Another very important point our Father and the Lord tells us today is the fact that we must not compromise in times of trials. He says, keep pressing on and you will see God's promises come to pass. Compromise is not the best way to go, it is the thief of God's promise to you. Though God's promise to you may seem to tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. I'd like us at this point to bow our heads and pray, we'd say, Father, help me to hold firmly to your promises. Help me to hold on to you until the very end in Jesus' name. Why not bow your heads and ask the Lord today for that grace that would keep us holding on to Him firmly, that would help us hold on to His promises. The grace that would keep us holding on despite the storms that we may face on our journey. Ask the Lord today for the grace for tenacity, the grace for doggedness, the grace to believe His word and His promise to us wholeheartedly. Also ask the Lord today, say, Father, please grant us the grace not to compromise as we keep holding on to your promise in Jesus' name. Ask the Lord today that we will not be looking for alternatives, that they will not be appealing to us, that he will help us fix our gaze on him and not on the many distractions around us. Declare unto the Lord today, say, Father, I trust you. I choose to trust you. 
I choose to hold on to your faithful promises. Please keep me from falling, keep me from compromises in the name of Jesus. Also ask the Lord today, say, Father, by your grace and your mercy, hasten the performance of your word in my life in Jesus' name. Let there be a speedy performance of that which you have promised to your glory. Begin to bring your prayers to a close and thank the Lord for answers to prayers. Father, we worship and we bless your name. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Our glorious God, we thank you for your word to us today. Thank you because you are making us stronger in faith. Thank you because you are helping us to keep holding on until we see the fulfillment of your promises to us. We declare that as we keep holding on, our eyes will see and our mouths will testify of your faithfulness. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. We have in our Bible in one year reading plan for today to read from the book of Deuteronomy chapter 9 down to chapter 11. We also want to thank you and appreciate you for joining us today. God bless you. If you'd love to speak to someone or to receive updates like this sent to you daily, please do well to send a WhatsApp or Telegram message to plus 234-80-986-11226. Do well also to like, share, comment and subscribe to our various platforms available. Our hymn for today is the hymn 30 of our Open Heavens devotional. We would be singing when we walk with the Lord. Have an awesome weekend ahead. See you tomorrow again by God's grace. God bless you and bye for now. I believe today's devotional blessed you. We are always glad to hear from you. So leave us a comment. Let us know how this has blessed you. Also remember to follow us on all our social media handles to get more like this. You can share this with someone to bless them too. We gladly look forward to seeing you tomorrow again. Have a fulfilling day ahead. God bless you.